Okay, I had a student have a question on this problem, how to calculate uh, some statistics for a two-stock portfolio that they're forming. Yeah, and uh, and they want to know the fraction of stock A that w would give you the minimum variance portfolio. So I'm going to move this aside. Well, I actually, I took these numbers and I put them in here. But I'm going to, instead of using expected return variance and covariance, I found some formulas out on the internet, and I'm going to use these formulas to calculate these these statistics. So I'm going to put these over here so you can see them, and uh, that way we can plug these in. So it says here the expected return for stock A and B are the are these two amounts. Well, the expected return in this case of these formulas I'm using here are going to be capital R. So I'm going to go ahead and put a capital R here, and then the next thing it says the next ones is the variance, right? right here. So a variance is actually sigma squared. Sigma is like the standard deviation. Sigma squared is the variance. So I'm just going to go ahead and insert a symbol. So I'm going to go uh, insert symbol. And under Greek and Coptic, if you look around, uh, you would look for uh, the sigma, which is right, right here. So I'm going to go ahead and insert it and then close. And then I want to square that, right? Yeah, and let me uh, superscript that. Oops, superscript. Oh, hold on. Superscript. Let me just click on it here. Superscript. Okay. So that's variance. And then the standard deviation is just the square root. The variance was looks like that, right? So and that's what, like, uh, you see right here. Well, they don't use variance in any of these equations. But... Uh, but that's what the variance, like if you actually if you took, if I went, uh, if I went here equals this, or if I equals square root of this, I get the same number, 0.24, right? So I could just do it that way instead of typing it. It's the same number, okay? And then the covariance is, uh, the symbol for the covariance would look like this, but have an A, B. And I want to go ahead and subscript that, so it look like that. So you can see that's the covariance symbol in this in this equation. Okay, so we want to find uh, we want to find the minimum. We want it says here we want to find uh, what fraction of stock A. What is the fraction of stock A in the minimum variance portfolio? Well, that's actually what they're asking for here. It's X A min and we want to superscript the min part so I'm going to go alternate E to superscript and then enter and then the A part uh, we want to subscript so I'm going to go alternate B for subscript and then enter okay so this is what they want to find and we know that that's what this equation is right here so I'm just so instead of using these words, I'm actually using the mathematical abbreviations, just so you understand. And like I say, I got these formulas off the internet. Some other formulas may be exactly the same, but use different symbols. But I'm, I'm trying to use the symbols we got right here. So now it's very easy to calculate this, just because now we have the symbols. The hard part is just knowing what these symbols mean, right? And uh, so so we're going to use this top formula here to find the, to find the fraction. What this means, if I had... Um, Let's just calculate it and I'll explain to you what it means. So, so, so since this formula has got a bunch of uh, terms in the numerator and a bunch of terms in the denominator, you always want to, you know, the, put the numerator and denominator in parentheses. That way, your order of operations is correct. It doesn't divide before it's done doing all the all the stuff in the numerator. So, the first thing it's asking is the variance of b. Well, this is the variance of b right here, and then minus the covariance, which is this right here. And now I'm going to close my, that's my two terms in the numerator. So I close my parentheses. And then the denominator, I'm going to open a parentheses. And it's asked for the variance of A, which is this right here. And then plus, it wants the variance of B, which is uh, this right here. And then minus two times uh, the covariance, which is that right here. And that's the number. So, um... Now, now that number, 
you're looking at 27% of my money. So if you had $10,000, you would put $2,727 in this stock. So if it was $100 a share, you'd buy like 20 something, 27 shares. That makes sense? So this is just how much of your dollars, if you're, if you're trying to invest $10,000 in these two stocks, well, 27% of your money you're doing stock A, and then one minus stock B would be, um, stock B would be just one minus that, right? Because those two together would be 100%. But anyway, let's go ahead and put this question into, let's put this into our, uh, into our SEPI and see if that worked. If I can find it here. Let me drag this over here into the, so if I paste that in, whoop, let me go alternate tab. I'm going to go copy and paste it in and see if we get it right. It is correct, right? And they're using the formula there. It shows you the formula. So it says, what is the standard deviation of a portfolio with 30% invested in stock A and the rest in stock B? So let's just take that problem. And uh, we'll go here and just paste it in. And let's calculate this. So we have our formulas up here. So now we have given... So I'm going to go ahead and take these again, copy them down here and paste them here. And we'll call this X, right? So you know 30% is this, so I'm going to go 30%. Or I could type 0.3. Well, we know this is 1 minus, 1 minus that, because you have to add up to 100%. So this equals 1 minus that, right? Just to double check, if I sum these, if I go here to auto sum, they add up to 100%. So that's my X's. And then it says, what's the standard deviation? Well, I'm going to use this formula right here. The standard deviation of the portfolio. So we want to find... So I'm going to use this formula right here. Copy. Paste. And I'm going to put a, a small p here. I'll subscript that. So they want to know the standard deviation of the portfolio. So basically the square root, you do this formula and just take the square root, but they have the whole formula right here, so it's very easy. So for a solution, by the way, this minimum variance port formula here, I don't believe you can solve this, find an exact solution for this uh, uh, Algebraically, you just so so th there's not so you'd have to use like solve or something if you have a larger portfolio. So you can call you couldn't go this route, okay? So, hey, let's go ahead and copy this, paste it. So now I'm going to use this formula right here. So, first thing you're going to do is it's going to be the square root, and then it says the the it says the weight of a squared. So it's going to be this. I forgot the equal sign, didn't I? Equals that's Excel 101. So it equals the weight of this squared, so I'm going to go carrot squared, times whoop, times uh, the variance of A, which is uh, right here, plus the weight of this squared times uh, the variance of B, plus 2 times the weight of A times the weight of B times the covariance. And then close the symbol in the square root. So let's just double check. It's uh, X squared plus the variance of A squared plus this squared times the variance of that squared. Well, it's already the variance. I don't need to square. If I would have done that, I would have had to square it. But this is already squared, right? So that's why I picked that. And plus 2 times this, times, whoops, times this, times this. It's color-coded, right? You can see. Times, finally, the covariance, which is B6. So that looks cor correct, so I hit Enter. And so let me highlight my solutions here. So that's my solution to the first one. 
That's my solution to the second one. So this is copy this and see if it's correct on our on our program here. Paste it in. And it got 0.1683. That's basically got so what is the standard deviation of a portfolio with 90% in A and, and the rest in stock B? Well, that should be pretty easy. All you're going to do is just change this to a 90. And then copy this. Paste it in. Submit. Okay. So that's how you would do that. Just quick, quick uh, summary on how you do that with two stocks. Um, I have videos where you do where you can do this with more than two stocks out there. I just published one today. Uh, let's see if we can find that video. Uh, I think if you want to get if you want to dig into this a little deeper, we can go out here to uh, this may go to YouTube. And go to my channel. I just published this one right here. So that's that's the so that actually digs a little de deeper with like th with like three with three things right so let's go ahead and uh, let me paste that back in so that's the video if you that's one video I have a lot of videos out there on my YouTube channel so that video there will actually you can really dig deep on this if you want but this is just the shortcut formulas for for two stock portfolio all right. So if you like this video, my picture should come up and you can click on that to click, click subscribe if you haven't already. Give me a thumbs up uh, if, if you want to and uh, give me some comments. Thanks for watching. Bye.